Hey, what's going on there, folks? Welcome back here to a Monday, the start of a work week here, 617, June 17, 2024, about 11.13 a.m. California time here. A 3.5, the latest quake in the cluster of earthquake activity across the uh, New Zealand area this morning, it looks like. Quite a bit of uh, three stirring up here across the plate boundary. No surprise there, though, considering... We did see some movement out here south of New Zealand here recently with that most recent six-pointer down there across that area. And, of course, a bunch of clustering going on here in the deeper regions of the Tonga Trench. It only makes sense to see a little bit of adjustment here across that plate boundary. And it does look like we're seeing um, some decent uptick there in that area today. I'm going to go over and check out the GeoNet servers here real quick and see what's going on down there in New Zealand. Uh, looks like we had a, obviously a couple threes out there. These are fairly shallow as well, about 20 to uh, 24 kilometers deep there for these quakes that are coming in this morning. And that's just the ones that are being felt as far as the all earthquakes and the unfelt ones. Uh, there's still um, some smaller quakes being reported. Mainly it looks like it's on the uh, North Island side of things so continue to keep an eye on this we could definitely see some further movement uh, with this little uptick that's going on here today again latest quake a 3.5 earthquake uh, i do see a 4.2 in there but i'm not for sure if uh let's see here let me bring up the usgs map again they're not showing anything on the four pointer side this may be uh, yeah, this may be one of those quakes up there around the South Island area, but uh, either way, we'll continue to watch that. Um, EMSC may show a little bit of better layouts here. There we go. There's going to be the uh, 4.2 and a couple other earthquakes out here on the map there. So heads up, New Zealand, stay safe out there. As uh, far as the rest of the globe goes, see what we got. We did have some further movement on the shallow side here across the area of Fiji, Tonga Trench, and also around the Vanuatu area, getting in on some uh, adjustment going on across that plate boundary. Further across the Indonesia Islands area, still seeing some movement uh, clustering out here. Japan still seeing some activity as well, a couple fours up there. As uh, far as any major movement up into the Alaska area, really not a whole lot stirring up out here for now. Uh, looks like things are calming down after a little bit of elevated movement out here in the past week. We've seen quite a bit of deeper activity and uh, quite the multitude of quakes out here. Nothing big, but it was definitely on the uptick. Uh, Pacific Northwest, nothing going on there. Northern California, not seeing any quakes showing up. Yesterday's trimmer event, 683 epicenters of trimmer. Now that's, uh, if we look at the daily chart here, uh, we go back, even the last week shows that yesterday's trimmer was one of the more higher counts on any given day. And it looks like that rings true for the majority of the month as well. So things are still uh, gaining some momentum out here and uh, in, ter in terms of the multitudes of trimmers being reported. 683, uh, the highest daily one in the past month. Now, if we look at the last week or so, we have seen some migration going on here, mainly from where we've watched the southern end here of the Cascadia stay elevated. We're seeing a more, uh, a little bit more pattern of uh, full coverage of the Cascadia subduction zone. So it does look like that's catching up. As always, I think there's you know an elevated chance of seeing. Uh, an earthquake of considerable size when we are looking at elevated trimmer count. So we'll see what tonight has in store in terms of the count. But uh, that's, you know, it's going up. It's not going down. It looks like it's starting to fill in more across the entire area of the Cascadia subduction zone. And not a whole lot of adjustment as far as surface activity goes. But you got to remember, when that trimmer activity occurs downstream here, we're obviously building up strain and uh, further pressure along the Cascadia subduction zone. Bay Area, fairly quiet, not a whole lot going on there for now across the uh, Northern California area. A uh, handful of smaller quakes there across the region of the Pinnacles area, it looks like, near the San Andreas Fault, the creeping segment. Did have another 2.6 here within that same region early this morning. 
Uh, but aside from that, most of the activity there on the globe, or at least on the map here, is showing very small microquake activity. Still seeing quite a bit of movement out here in Texas and Oklahoma. New Madrid seismic zone showing a little bit of activity today. 2.2 late last night and a 2.3 this morning. A little bit of activity stirring up here across the eastern portion of the country as well. With, uh, well, the latest one looks to be a 1.9 into the New Jersey area. Looks like maybe there was a 1.6 in there as well yesterday hiding underneath this, this one. Uh, let's see what else we got here far as any broad scale movement out in the Atlantic. Pretty quiet. The Atlantic Ocean, as you can see, uh, very quiet out there. South America region, a handful of smaller quakes uh, clustering across the area today. Uh, I think a swarm stands out pretty nicely there in the Texas area. These guys have been getting hit quite rapidly with earthquake activity. Got about 28 earthquakes or so in the last 24 hours, but this is nothing if you look at uh, any daily charts out here. This area of Texas, huge amount of oil fields getting hit, 386 earthquakes there in the last 30 days, and you can pretty much pinpoint areas of interest out here in terms of uh, specific oil fields out there. All right, uh, let's see what else do we have. Hawaii still sitting at uh, uh, a standstill, I guess. I mean, there's really not a whole lot of change there. Let's go check it out and see what's going on here for the uh, latest information there from the USGS volcano site. Kilauea volcano still at a yellow and advisory. Uh, not erupting, obviously. The uh, deformation data was going down a little bit last night in the uh, update. And it uh, looks like we've kind of did a little dip here, a couple dips. Now we're headed back up, it looks like, in terms of inflation. We'll continue to keep an eye on this because we are at an elevated state. And, in fact, the highest level since uh, 2018 is being observed out here. So just a matter of time before we see some type of displacement going on, uh, either around the rift zones or maybe we'll even see maybe a, another fissure eruption here across the area. Definitely have to watch that. Uh, earthquake activity, as I noted there, not a whole lot stirring up there in the region for now. Yellowstone National Park, well, hard to say. There's not a whole lot going on out here. Maybe some very small spiky earthquakes there on the map. But uh, aside from that, not a whole lot of, uh, of interesting activity, which is good, right? We don't want to wake up that super volcano. Uh, up in the Iceland area, let's go check out the live from Iceland site. Let's see what's going on up there today on this fabulous Monday. It does look like there's still quite a bit of lava flow coming off of this. Uh, I believe that's going to be the north side here, uh, finding its way down. And about, there was a little spider on me. That's kind of a little creepy. Not for sure where that came from. But, uh, yeah, got some uh, beautiful lava flows there coming out, still active. Obviously, a little bit of fountaining going on out here as well. Uh, as far as any updates go from the Icelandic Met Office, let's check this out real quick, see what we got. Well, it looks like this was put out about four days ago. Um, so nothing new for now. Still lava pond, lava you know, presence, obviously indicating um, the ongoing eruption there across Iceland. Let's check out the latest runtime series here in terms of inflation across the area. Where let's go over here to the uh, Grindvik area and see what we have. This is the vertical displacement right here up in MM. Here's the eruption, lost quite a bit of volume of uh, inflation there, obviously, right? Um, but we're starting to go up a little bit. There is a little upward trend here in the last couple runs, and uh, that could. Be a sign that this, uh, you know, could be ongoing for a little while, and um, just have to watch it, and see what, see what happens, see how it plays out there. As far as space weather activity goes, uh, really not expecting much here. We were looking at 37.12, a sunspot that is currently facing the Earth, but it's going through some type of um, changing stage or morphing type stage here doesn't look like there's a whole lot of complexity within this core. It is somewhat separated. Um, 
and all these other ones here, they don't look like any anything's going to pop off of those either. Uh, but right now, just the main area, we may see some sea flare activity, maybe even a low-grade M flare from this regional sunspot that is currently facing us, 3712. Now, there was a pretty decent far side eruption there earlier uh, today, and uh, we believe that is from sunspot number 3664, produced a massive uh, full halo CME. Um, well, pretty much a full, almost a full halo CME there on the far side of the sun. Again, that's probably from 3664, 3697, and it will be renamed to a new sunspot number once it comes back around the bend here for a third time. Now, let me show you guys here on this map. This is uh, looks like it's a day behind, but this is a sunspot number 3697, the culprit of all the X flares here recently. We're going to get a glimpse of that here in within a week here, I feel. And it does look like it's still active from today's far side explosion event. So I'll uh, definitely have to watch the sunspot as it comes back around the bend for the third time. Overall threat right now with the earth facing side of the sunspots, 99% chance for a C flare. M flare 55, X flare around 10% chance or so. Uh, but really not expecting much from this little sunspot unless it decides to do something a dynamic in terms of gaining um, you know rapid strength but it doesn't look like it wants to right now all right storm prediction center for as severe weather goes obviously got a little bit of severe weather across the nor northern P plains it is monday there we go need to make uh, my coffee a little bit stronger i think there it is a little bit of tornado potential wind and some hail threats out here as well um, far as any tropical development going on here across the Gulf of Mexico, it does look like something's going to key up here this week, mainly going to stay around the, uh, the Texas area. It looks like Southeastern Texas region, uh, but not going to develop in, into, uh, anything rapid far as a strong hurricane goes, but we've got to watch that there towards the 20, 25th, 26th. That's a ways out there though. That shows a couple different hurricanes down here in the Gulf of Mexico, but you know, that's a ways out, almost 10 days out here. So we'll have to watch that. But it is getting close to that time of year, right? Where we need to uh, be on guard. All right, so we got a couple big fires out here. It's super windy here in Northern California right now. And the north wind means very dry conditions. And um, there's fires popping up all over the place here. Um not around me, but we do have a couple of them up north around the Redding area. Uh, there's a couple fires up there down south in Southern California as well. Uh, I'm sure you guys heard about the, uh, I believe it's a, the post fire here. This one's gaining some steam and momentum um, close to the grapevine area north of Los Angeles. This one's got a, uh, oh, got about 15,000 acres burnt here. 8% containment. That's going to be a big one. There's a lot of dry fuel out here. We've had sufficient winter, sufficient rainfall and snowfall in the winters, but unfortunately that rainfall uh, contributes to growth, right? You get this uh, brush growth and, and just general grasses out there, weeds, and uh, they can take off pretty quickly when they dry up in terms of uh, a fire spread. So we'll watch that. It does look like California is going to be, unfortunately, in a another major fire season out here. Uh, on days like this, I do not barbecue whatsoever because it's super dry. Um, got dew points in the low 30s and humidities down there as well. So not a good day to do any type of fire, uh, outside fire activity in terms of barbecues and whatnot. We are underneath a red flag warning here in the red. That does stretch all the way down to the San Joaquin Valley. So pretty big deal. No burning, that's for sure. Um, well, we'll just kind of watch it. All it takes is, uh, you know, one incident and we could have a huge fire. There is still stuff to burn out here in California. These are old, uh, old fire perimeters here uh, in the gray and the light gray. Of course, that covers a lot of the region that burn up here in the campfire and, um, the Dixie fire up here around Chester. Fortunately, that didn't burn the town down. They were pretty fortunate, but uh, it did burn up in the Mount Lassen area, 
last in the volcanic national park up there. A lot of it burned. Used to be beautiful green trees. Now it's just a bunch of dry sticks and uh, a little depressing. I used to go up there quite a bit to do some hikes and whatnot, but yeah, going to take a while before that grows back. Uh, anyway, yeah, there's definitely quite a bit to burn out here still. And, um, hopefully, you know, hopefully fingers crossed that we don't have a major fire season, but it's already looking bad, uh, with stuff keying up out here and fires popping up out of the blue again. All right, folks, I'm out of here. Have yourself a good Monday. Stay safe out there and we will catch you guys back out here a little bit later on. Stay safe.